Okay. Good morning, good day. Welcome to the Zactronics uh, Man vs. Machine show match. We have got at the other end of the line uh, Mr. Showmatch Litabot or Martin Royerkes himself. Hi Martin, how are you? Hello Litabot, uh, hello uh, Nepta I mean, and hello Litabot in the game itself. <laughs> okay, so this is the show match uh, part of the Zactronics Man uh, vs. Machine Team League. I took some bots that played in the Team League and some human players that played in the Team League as well. And now I've pitted them up against each other. I'm going to show some of those replays for you today. And in this case, it's my bot. And I'm not going to spoil too much, but it's it's already mentioned in the chat, which you can see on the screen soon enough. But my bot is going to go for a little bit of a risky strategy. I'm going to see how a, a like C minus player deals with it. And the next replay is how a C that's like a C plus, yeah, C plus player deals with it, and then you can see the difference between the play style of a uh, human player that's kinda okay at the game, and someone who's like very top level. Okay, so that's a bit of an issue because last year at the um, Student Starcraft tournament we did a show match versus a semi-pro player from Russia, Gen5, and he slaughtered every bot, so perhaps this will be more interesting and more representative of an average player, do you think? Yeah, Neustadt definitely, but Fisher is already getting quite quite good, really. Uh, Gem 5 is like an A level player, and yes. uh, Fisher is more of a C, plus, so there's still a huge gap between them. Mm -hmm. Just like there's a huge gap between bots and top level Koreans, of course. Yeah, that's no comparison. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, right now my bot is, of course, building a wall. It's known for doing that. It's got the A star algorithm used for that. It's also sending out a scout, which is currently blocked by the barracks. Oh, yeah, that's a yeah. pity. Yeah, but uh, it, can find, it paths the way around it. Because um, every bot still uses the built in pathfinding. You can, of course, roll out your own um, movement system, but you still have to use the in game pathfinding. You can only send unit commands. You cannot. Have complete control over the game. You cannot see it that way. No. Oh, that's also good. And perhaps that's also one of the reasons that the APM, which you see here in the top left, is so very high for the, um, the AI player. Literbot is now at 3,000 APM. <laughs> so that's quite a lot for having only a bunch of SCVs and one marine. Yeah, well, that's because of the mining algorithm. As in, my bot is optimizing the path it takes to the mineral fields. So, mm -hmm. it's still not the most optimal path, but it's much better than the default path. You can sometimes also see SVs dancing around mineral fields, waiting for them to, mm -hmm. uh, the queue to fill, uh, leave. And that way, uh, the minerals, total min amount of minerals gathered, is mm -hmm. significant significantly higher. Well, not that really that significantly actually. It's about 5% more or so. But okay. still it's more than uh, the default pathfinding can yes. use. So for my uh, figures, how many actions per minute are you using currently for that mining algorithm you spoke of? Well, um, it's most of, the, most of those APM you see there, it's for the mining algorithm. But that's mm -hmm. mainly because I haven't really optimized those actions yet. As in a lot of those actions are just spamming to click on a mineral field, which isn't really ideal. Oh, and the first probe nearly gets shot down. Uh, by this time, it looks like a liter bot is going for four marines out of the barracks and then an academy and a factory. Let's have a look at what the Protoss, the human player, is doing. We now see a, a goon, a dragoon, coming up to the wall and firing on a, um, on a depot. The Marines, though, chase it off, so that's a bit of a standoff. And if we look at the, the Protoss base, we see two gates coming up and Dragoon range finishing. So that will give the Dragoons an advantage over the Marines behind the wall. Yeah, that's true. It's a standard two-gate uh, Goon range build. It's a bit aggressive, but with the wall that Leaderboard built, uh, Leaderboard can easily hold out that rush. So it won't be that much of a problem. And uh, the SVs are also pulled off to repair uh, any damage done to the buildings. Yeah. And Leaderbot also has the high ground. So in general, okay. Leaderbot will be able to hold this rush. We see so. that now. We've got four Marines repelling two Dragoons, and the Dragoons retire. 
And now there is a medic coming up, so that's, um, I think, Litabot is safe for the moment, especially with the siege tank and siege mode coming up. Yep, the siege tank is out right now, my five minutes time mark. Okay, well, it's just uh, you're five seconds ahead of me. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, we've got three dragoons now, and they're being fought back by four marines with the medic and the siege tank. Yeah, so this is like uh, it started out as a standard siege expand opening, which is something human, human players do as well. It's pretty standard so far, but now you can see a deviation going on. There mm -hmm. are some barracks being built, so this is a very aggressive build from Nidabot. Okay. It's the one that but she also uses in the tournament, it's currently going on at the Student Stock of the Eye Tournament 2016. Mm -hmm. You can see they built an action as well against some bots. Okay, so two more barracks. I take it it will push out soon with the two tanks and the marines with the medics. Oh, yeah, oh, it the has marines, to oh no, one marine gets picked off. And the dragoons, they, ooh, they catch another, but now two siege tanks are up and the dragoons take a lot of damage. They now leave the natural. And I think if we look at the Protoss base, what is going on? More pylons being built. Robotics uh, facility finishing up. And that's about it, really. I think you, Neustadt is about to take a uh, Nexus in the natural. And yeah, plops it down. Oh, yeah. and three dragoons get killed. Neustadt is not paying attention, and the siege tank take a huge toll. Now three tanks and a marine moving out versus only five dragoons. I don't think you... Oh, Neustadt is really a bit careless with the dragoons there. That's not good. Well, the thing you have to keep in mind, though, is that uh, Neustadt still has more supply, of course. And so mm -hmm. he can still come back from this if he has good micro. Yeah. But this, so, but Neustadt is like a C-minus player, which is your... Sli slightly average player on the uh, IC Cup. Mm -hmm. So, if he has, so it's a question about whether or not he has the micro to pull this off. Yes, but he's only got two gateways, a third now finishing. And there are tanks. Oh, and there are no Marines left. So, it's only medics with tanks. That's not the ideal combination, of course. But Litabot is bringing out the pressure. And we've got a shuttle, too. Well, yeah, but it's only got the um, Dragoon and Zealot in it. And with the Marines close by, the shuttle cannot really do that much damage because the shuttle can be taken down. And as you can see, the Marines and the Firebat easily take down the Zealot trying to take down the tank. Okay, well, Neustadt is under huge pressure. And the tanks do get damaged. Uh, might be nice to bring out... Oh, there is an SCV actually, which is going to repair the tank, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's something that, that is something that uh, bots do a lot, especially Terran bots. They bring out units to repair on the field, which is something that professional players they do it as well, but it's quite APM intensive. Yeah. But uh, and for bots, that's not a problem. They can just easily micro hits and run while repairing units at the same time. Yeah. Now if we look at the APM difference, Litabot is now at 1700, and Neustadt is uh, at only 10% of that. First reef route now in a shuttle, that will be interesting to see. But versus the siege tanks, that will be hard to do, to uh, micro that well. Yeah, but the reef is mainly useful for destroying the, the so-called M&M composition, which is the marines and medics. Mm -hmm. And for that, it will be very useful because one scab can easily take down like eight marines if you get a good hit yeah. off. But it looks like there are too many tanks out there, and Neustadt is under a huge amount of pressure. Well, oh, he takes on a tank with it, so. Oh, a huge amount of marines are as well. Okay, two Reavers now closing in on the Terran army, and they're going to let fly. One tank dies, and. Oh, that's that Scarab took out, you said, like eight Marines, and I think that were eight Marines taken out all in one shot. Now two Reavers versus the Marines and the tanks. Ooh, and they, just in time, they get back loaded up into shuttle. But now there are siege tanks in the mineral line of Neustadt, and the AI player, Litabot, is looking in a good position to take the game. Yes, so far the micro has really paid off, and uh, well, one reaver dies. That's not good. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at the uh, Neustadt and his uh, total amount of minerals and gas, mm -hmm. you can easily see that Liedebot has a much better macro. Liedebot has all, spends almost all of his minerals almost immediately. And Neustadt still has like 300 minerals or so, and uh, two gateways are not producing. Mm -hmm. So simply put, uh, Liedebot has the multitasking, and yeah. Neustadt uh, he's not a very experienced player yet, so he kind of a lag set, so that really hurt okay. him really a lot. Yeah. And the Reaver is cornered now. It's got a lot of kills, but there is just too much going on inside the base of Neustadt. And now with the tank in range of the topmost corner of the map, I think that Shuttle and Reaver have nowhere to hide. Ooh, two more Zealots try to do something, but they get killed. And oh, the Reaver just makes it out with about... How many? Oh, with about 40 hit points, and he must have an amazing amount of kills, but in the end, I think that the shuttle will now go down. Oh, and the shuttle makes it out of there with five hit points. That's incredible. And then flies over a marine, so that's about it. Neustadt has no more minerals and calls the GG. First game for the AI. That's quite impressive. Congratulations, Martin. Yeah, well, it's a C minus player. It's not really the, the biggest achievement in the world. But, no, but still. Uh, still, so the main thing to take away, of course, from that is, of course, that uh, the AI, the bots, can multitask a lot better. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they can easily keep its macro up. So even yep. though the Reaver did a lot of damage, Leaderbot could just keep on putting units uh, to the base of the enemy and mm -hmm. kept on doing that. And because of that, it's even though. Uh, efficiently, it wasn't very good. And it uh, got the job done. It got the job done because of the multitasking, because it, it was able to hit and run and keep its tanks alive through repairing, yeah. all the while still macroing at the same time. Okay. So that's that's against a C minus player who isn't very good at that sort of stuff at the same time. Yeah. But the next you play is Leaderbot versus Fisheye. Yeah. Now we're going to take on a C plus player who is good at that sort of stuff. Okay. And then you can see the difference. Yeah, I'm All going right. to stick it in. Uh, are you ready? Yep. Two, one, go. Go from faster speed. And uh, now go. we've got Leaderbot as the purple Terran at the other end of the map. We've got another Protoss and it's called Fisheye. Yeah, he's brown, right? Brown. Yeah. He's a brown Protoss, right? Oh, what did I say? Uh, Fisheye, yeah, Fisheye versus Leaderbot, is it? Yeah? yeah, 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 correct. Okay, yeah, so good. So okay, it must be colorblind, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's purple for the bots and brown for the side. Okay, so uh, before we go on, it's of course the sponsor time. It's uh, Zectronics Industries, and they've released a new game. And this time it's Shenzhen IO, which is, um, well, the best way to describe it is you're basically, it's a puzzle kind of game where you have to program circuits, not really mm -hmm. like uh, real life programming, more like a, a very toy language. It's still a very useful game to teach you how to program. It's a more introductory kind of fun way to learn how to program. So it's a new game that's out from Zectronics. You can buy it on Steam right now. And yeah, you can definitely check that one out. And there are also some other games that he created, also in the same vein of this uh, fun way to teach you how to program. They all teach a bit of different concepts, like Space Camp is more about uh, multi threaded uh, thinking, whereas um, the most accessible one is perhaps Infinity Factory. Like if you want to start out somewhere, you mm -hmm. might as well start out with Infinity Factory. That's very easy to understand. It's a bit like uh, Minecraft, very blocky, but mm -hmm. instead of mining, you build your factories, assembly lines. Okay. And it, it also teaches you the basic concepts of programming, but not without any programming. That's also a fun way to learn. So yeah, but anyway, in general, just check out Sectronic Industries games. Those ones will uh, give you a fun way of learning how to program. Yeah. And if you ever get really good at it, you might even take up coding AIs like uh, this one called Leaderbot as the purple Terran in the corner. Again, starting out with a wall off and the barracks first. Meanwhile, lots of SCVs. At the other end, the Protoss going for an equal amount of probes and Gateway first, then a very fast cyber core. Looks like it's going to be uh, Dragoon pressure again. What do you think? Yeah, that's pretty standard. Like uh, the thing about uh, 
even if you have a bot in a game, mm-hmm. there's still a meta that's kind of similar to human games, because even though you have a slightly more efficient uh, mineral gathering rate, because of mineral gathering argon, it's only like, you know, like 5% if that, uh, 5% like, 5% is like the, the top that you can get. So you're still constrained in your build orders in the sense that the total amount of minerals that you have limits your options, just like a human player would, because these computers don't get any bonuses in the minerals that they gather. It's just that my pathfinding algorithm has a little bit of a better uh, choice, but otherwise you still have to follow the same build orders in the same sense. So going for a standard one gate, uh, like FISI is currently doing, uh, it's pretty, pretty reasonable to do. Okay. So now chasing off the SCV with the goon. And oh, oh, yeah, looks like my SV is, yeah, my SV gets a pro kill, but not that significant, but still very funny. No. And yeah, one down and finally dies itself. That's a pity. Now it's all about what's going to come next. Leaderbot is looking looks like to do the same build as it did the previous game with the academy with the factory and a lot of scvs for one base that's a lot of scvs uh, well in general if you play universe human you see it as well you usually separate the mineral line uh, even if you go for a rush like this because you can still reinforce your army or if necessary pull back and expand and play with a slight loss and try to recoup from there Leadbot doesn't really do that. I've set it to just purely attack and not recoup anywhere. Let's try and see how uh, a player would deal with this. And as you can see, a C minus player has a huge trouble with it. Mm-hmm. Like even if he knows it's coming, it's still difficult because normally what you would do is exactly what Neustadt did, as in you build a reaver to deal with the uh, medics and marines. Yeah. But uh, if you don't have a micro pulled off, then you still lose. Okay. So now the two dragoons are coming in trying to do some damage to the depot and the four marines come in to defend like in the previous game uh, yeah. and this time the dragoons stand their ground they fire at the marines but now medic pops out and i don't think a single marine has been killed as yet no no that's also a party to do due to the high ground advantage if you shoot from the low ground to the high ground you have a 50 percent chance or so to miss i don't know the exact number uh, Somewhere i around think 70 percent Oh yeah, so like you got that. a thirty percent chance to miss. That that's the exact number, yeah. Okay, and now the first marine dies, and all of a sudden it's oh the second dies as well. So these three dragoons of fish eyes are much more aggressive and much better micro than those of Neustadt. But now with the tank, surely they can't hold out. They kill one more marine, take some damage, and then retreat to um, to the bridge. Yeah, definitely. So as you can see, that you can definitely see that uh, Fisheye is a much better player. He's able to make sure that his Dragoons do as much damage as possible. But as soon as those Dragoons lose their shields, he pulls them back immediately. And that way they can regenerate the shields without losing too much hit points. Yep. So they're now in yellow hit points, but they still have got the uh, shields regenerating right now. Yeah. And you can also see in the, the Protoss main base, we still got the shuttle with the reaver, but it's much faster. And we've got the gate, and we've got the expansion up already. So this build order of uh, fish eyes is the same, but it's much better executed. Yeah, definitely, it's much more. And you can see as well, he has much better macro as well. Okay. And uh, so here comes the push. Be, yeah. And okay. now the dragoons come in, and they try to take on the tanks. They kill one. Two and not a dragoon has died as of yet, so this is much better goon micro by a fish eye. Oh yeah, definitely. So as I said before, if you have the micro pulled off, you could be able to hold this. You can hold off this kind of push, but uh, leaderboard still has, of course, this high APM. So anything can still happen, of course. Mm-hmm. Yes, it can, but it's it's not really grouping its units anymore, and we've got a shuttle with a reaver on the way right now. It's just leaving the natural of the Protoss, and behind that we've got one more gateway coming up, we've got an observatory, one more reaver coming, and a small pylon at the... Oh, look at that. 
couple of goons die. Sorry to have missed that, but now we've got a Reaver out on the battlefield taking on this siege tank. Um, oh, it's Lou. Oh, that was really sloppy by Fish. I lost the Reaver for no reason. No good reason. Killed a tank, but at this moment, uh, the Marines are out with the fire bats, with the siege tank, and Fisheye is losing goons. That is not good because the Litabod, although it's behind in supply and has only got one base, is very, very aggressive. Yeah, but the thing is, you have to keep in mind is that uh, Fisheye already has his Nexus all completely up and running is in his natural expansion. Yep. So right now, uh, Fisheye can produce more units than Litabod. So okay, so now the Marines and the Firebat arrive at the choke of the natural siege tank sieges, and the Marines try to get to grips with the dragoons. Dragoons firing, and there is where is it? The shuttle with the Reaver should come to help, but it's lagging in the back of the base. Four dragoons going for the siege tank, and the tank dies. But there is more coming from Lisabot. So again, the human player under lots and lots of pressure. Yeah, it's it's not as one-sided as you might think it is. So it's still a lot of back and forth. But with good Reaver, Maiko, uh, I think I should be able to hold this. Okay, so now the Reaver drops. Oh, and the first carrot kills all, kills two of the medics. And that's a huge amount of damage. So I don't think that Leaterbot will be able to sustain this push. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that carrot went completely wild. Alright, so it looks like uh, the Weaver indeed did push the push back, but Leaderbot uh, recovered and so right now is pushing towards natural again. Yeah, one tank, four marines, one medic, and more coming up from the rear. Now we've got a shuttle with two Reavers, and all the gateways are producing. Fisheye is spending his money much better than was uh, Neustadt in the previous game. Yeah. Oh, and with two scarabs, that siege tank got one shot at just by. Uh, oh, look at that! One pylon goes down, but the Mar it's now marines versus reavers, and as a marine, that's not a it's not a fight you want to take, really. Yeah. Okay. So with that pylon destroyed, Fisher is now supply blocked, but he's got uh, enough dragoons and reavers to hold off any kind of push that comes from Leaderbot. Like even if Leaderbot tries to recoup right now and take his natural expansion. He would have too much trouble with that because uh, Fisheye is now enough units to counter push, really. Yeah, this is not looking good for Leaderbot right now. Yeah, you so said he, earlier he... that you programmed an aggressive strategy. Um, can Leaderbot at this point do anything to get back into the game? Well, I've set them to not do anything but attack, of course. But even if I set them to then go and uh, uh, try to take natural expansion. Right now yeah. it would not be a good idea anyway, okay. because you would no, lose regardless. The GG. So uh, one game for the human players and one for Leaderbot. Um, let's wrap up during the start of the next game. Uh, going to start the third replay, which will be TSMU Protoss against uh, the first human player, uh, Neustadt again. Are you ready, Martin? Yeah, same Okay, one. three, two, one, go. Oh. And okay. there we go again. And this is TSMU Prodots, who is currently also playing in the Student Starcraft AI tournament. Mm -hmm. It's in the top 16. Well, the, the matches are still ongoing, of course, so I don't know exactly which one. But it's not top 3, I guess. No, no, not top 3. It's somewhere in the top 16, definitely. Yeah. No, that's true. TSMU has been working very hard, but he hasn't work, been working on his bot. He has been working on something called Open Brood War, which is especially, which is basically a duplicate of the game, but with better internal mechanics. So you can run it in parallel, and you can run thousands of games if you've got the computing power, all in a very short time span. So for those of um, our AI researchers who are doing things like uh, learning or genetic branching. It will be uh, a very great asset once it gets finished. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, they already got the um, replay section working for Terran versus Terran last time I checked. So you can watch replays in your browser if you have the bootloader files and sort of files. So the .mpq files. If you have those, if you install bootloader, you already have them. Then you can watch a replay 
in your browser without having to install Bootroar itself. That's the power of open source uh, Bootroar, okay. which TSMU is building on. And somebody else as well, uh, I don't know his real name, I think it was Imp. Right. Yeah, Imp's doing the PR for Open Brute War, but I don't think he's actually involved in the coding itself. Okay, uh, I don't know the exactly how it works yet. I haven't looked that much into it. Hmm. But anyway, in terms of the back to the game, so uh, this is Portos versus Portos. The blue bot is TSMU Portos, and I, I used my own username on Isaacup, but the, don't don't be mistaken. This is not Leaderbot. Leaderbot still only plays Terran. This is the Protoss bot from TCMU, who is currently also working on an open source uh, clone of Boudoir. Yep. yep. And we've got our first human player called Neustadt. Again, going for the same opening, so uh, Gateway first, but building a Zealot this time. No, yeah, that's pretty standard in Protoss, first Protoss. Okay. And well. TCMU is going for a Dragoon opening, which is also possible. So pretty standard openings, as you might expect, because the thing, as I said before, the thing about bot games is that they still are constrained by the same uh, game rules as human players do. So the beta is kind of similar in the sense that you'll see those standard build orders just like you would in a human player, but the unit composition might be slightly different due to the micro capabilities that these bots have. But otherwise, the build order, especially initially, Build order is usually very similar to human players. Mm. Yeah, well, we're going to find out how it's going to go. The probe of uh, Neustadt is going at the, the gateway. Of course, won't kill it at all. It hasn't got damage for that. And we now see two human zealots um, advancing upon the Protoss base of TSMU Protoss. Yeah, but uh, TSMU has got a Dragoon out. And the thing about Dragoons is that they are range units that can do the hit and run micro. And yeah, that, if there's one thing that bots can do very, very well, if they don't get stuck with buff fighting, of course, and it's of course the hit and run because they can do that indefinitely without getting tired. And they can do that for each unit individually if they want. And if they don't uh, spam the APM buffer and uh, get stuck like my bot sometimes does. Okay. As in, uh, yeah, that, that's basically the, for those who are wondering uh, about an APM limit, there is one internally in the engine itself. If you spam too much APM, then commands won't get processed anymore. Okay, but I've seen bots do 50,000 APM, so I don't think that internal game limit is reached very easily. Yeah, my bot has reached it several times, even okay. during this, this 2016 tournament. Okay, so now you can see we've got one zealot in the mineral line being engaged by all the probes and one dragoon. At the other end, we've got two zealots going at one badly damaged dragoon at the ramp, and TSC Mu is microing it individually. And the human player comments on that and said, Oh my god, go so. And I think he means go so, which means a screen for um, god. pretty good. God like. Yeah, so it's. Pretty standard uh, zealot opening versus the goon, where you've got the micro york the goons against the zealot. And with the micro the bot, well, there were some micromanagement mistakes a little bit because the East move kept running into some zealots. I think that has to do with the latency which we were playing on because yeah. we weren't playing with land latency. Oh, that so right because that goon is yeah. badly messed up, it seems. Yeah. But the probe micro is quite interesting to see and also is very useful for holding up any kind of zealot rush. So pretty good so far from TSMU, even with, without land latency, it's still good micro. Yeah, and why is that so important for AIs compared to humans that they've got land latency? What's the, what's the big difference? Um, and they don't necessarily need it. It's just that um, the thing is that bots can make much better use of the reaction time that they have. After all, as you might imagine, bots have much better reaction time. Mm -hmm. and so but the limiting factor there, once you have such high reaction time, is of course the latency, the time it takes for your commands to actually get processed. Okay. So the lower that is, the more you benefit from a high, uh, from your high reaction time as a bot, so to speak. Okay. So now we've got three blue dragoons of TSC moves. Two are a little bit damaged. At the other end of the map, we've got the same three dragoons. And what's following? 
behind this. I think we've got a rower facility coming, so perhaps more Reaver play. Yeah, DSU but... instead of a robotics facility opting for the expansion. So yeah. this is the first divergence in build orders we see. Interested to see how it's going to pan out. Yeah, so as you might expect from such a build, uh, the purple human player is going for a very aggressive build. And um, TSMU is going for a more economic opening. So TSMU has to be on the defensive right now. Yeah, as long as he can hold off the push that the human player is going to do, TSMU is going to be ahead. But that, of course, requires him to hold off that push. Okay, so the human player is building more dragoons. They've got the range. And of course, we are now seeing a shuttle being built and a reaver. So the human player will have a big advantage in dragoons and the shuttle with a reaver. Question is, can TSMU uh, fight them off simultaneously? Uh, well, the thing is with Protoss versus Protoss, since it's a mirror matchup, Micro is very, very important, much more so than in the other Protoss matchups. So, uh, especially the Green Micro. So, Green Micro is the defining feature of Portus vs. Portus, along with Storms and Reaver Drops, of course. Yes. But uh, especially in the early game, like now, the Green Micro is the key to winning. Yeah. Okay, and we now see the, oh, the Reaver okay. being built, and three Dragoons are up in the third of TSC moves and are not defending. That might, that might cost no, them no, the game. No, no, it's a concave. Uh, TSC Moo is currently doing a concave, and as you can see, it's very effective. Castismo has currently flanked the human player, and uh, as you can see, the purple goons are all dying. Oh, now. now they are joining battle. That's really good. The human player loses one dragoon and another one. Tiasimu losing goons himself. The three from the third are being attacked, are cut down, and underway is now the shuttle with the reaver. So even if Neustadt doesn't really get the upper hand in the goon battle, which it looks like he isn't. That's oh, no. still the shuttle with the Reaver on the way to help save the day for the human race. Exactly. But the thing is that uh, that Dragoon uh, battle that you saw, the TSMU was flanking, which is a very good strategy, of course, uh, in general. And that's quite an advanced tactic, especially for uh, Buddha bots. It's oh, and now the Reaver is in the mineral line. He's letting oh. go. Oh, and that was a huge scarab hit. That was really, really good. Unfortunately, the human player loses a dragoon. Oh, and another shot. Four kills already. Oh, that must be another four, seven. Seven kills for the Reaver, and the shot is dead. But it is now the goons don't really dare to get in there to save the probes, and yeah. the probes are taking a beating. Yeah, so if DSMU poured us. Oh able... god, all the probes! Uh, yeah. Oh so, god, this is painful. Yeah, so if these move portals would have been able to uh, just attack move that Reaver, he would have won the game, basically, because of his good micro. But unfortunately, this, this one is really to showcase that even though they've got good micro, the bots sometimes they get stuck somewhere, somehow, I don't know exactly why oh, in this god. case. That's why he loses. Otherwise, yeah. he would have had this game. That's the thing. Oh, that's a pity. Yeah. That must be at least 15 probes and 10 dragoons taken down by one reaver. Yes. But the reason why I still picked this replay is because of that uh, flanking attack that uh, these reporters did at the big game before the reaver attack. Yeah, that was pretty and good. That, that one was very, very, very good. That's a very advanced strategy. And that really showcases that some of the bots do have much more than just APM to their name. They can actually perform things like uh, flanking attacks. Okay. So there is more to bots than just having a lot of APM. Like, as a matter of fact, a lot more. Just high APM. There are plenty of bots in the student stock of arguments right now that have even more. They have a lot of APM, have a lot of good micro, but they still are number one, not even close. Actually, some okay. of them are actually even all the way down to the bottom, despite having good micro. Oh god, that Reaver, I do want to see how many kills it's got, because it must be a huge number. 37 kills in the early game, that is... that's quite good. Yeah, so... Yeah, so... Teesmoon Poros still has a bit of problem with uh, dealing with Reavers. That's a bit unfortunate, but uh, otherwise the Groom Micro from Teesmoon Poros is actually quite good. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, shall we call this game a GG and a victory for the human player and move on to the next? Yeah, go on to the next. Okay, so one, two, three, GG! Like a pro Korean commentator. And we move on into the next game, which Last will be today, uh, yeah. Killerbot versus Fisheye. So another AI versus the second human player. Are you ready? Just uh, start it. Okay, let's go. I'm low. Yep, there we go. So, again, human player Fisheye playing as Protoss once more at the other end of the map as the Red Zerg. We've got Killerbot. Yeah, named after the Zerg player Killer because it says Killer is a Korean Zerg player who plays Zerg. And I, I don't know if that one is known for its lurker play. But uh, the killer bot definitely is known for its uh, lurkers. But uh, against Protoss, I think it does Hydras instead. After all, Hydras are much more effective. Maybe it builds a lurker or two, but uh, in Zerg for Protoss, you generally want Hydras as a Zerg player. Okay, well, we're going to see which build order it will pick. And of course, uh, Killerbot won last year's uh, Student Starcraft AI tournament uh, finals, beating a Protoss player 3 to 0 in the finals. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, quite a good bot. It even plays uh, in the 2016 tournament. It has been updated recently as well. And so it even beat my bot once in the 2016 tournament. But it's not at the number one spot anymore. No. It's. Uh, let me check where it is right now. Uh, it's it is right now at or seventh. Fi no, fifth, uh, fifth or sixth. Yeah, somewhere like right now in the tournament. It's still ongoing, of course, but right now it's at the fifth or like sixth place. So it's still quite a decent buffer. Okay, and we won't be showing you the standings at the moment, but guess who is at number one? Yeah, well, <laughs> who knows? Okay, so well, you had a good run last year. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't quite uh, make it until the end. Yeah, that was the four-point defense, which actually still is a bit of a problem right now because I did lose one game against Chris Choke again. But apparently, Chris Choke has updated his bot, so and the replay wasn't showing. So I don't know exactly why my bot lost to Chris Choke this time. But anyway, in this game itself, it's a Early pool with a hatchery. It's and Fisheye is going for a, a gateway first, which is not really all that standard. Usually, you go for a forge fast expand. You build the forge first and then the gateway. So this is a much more aggressive opening. Which uh, well, let's see what the Killerbot does with this aggressive opening. Mm. Yeah going to uh, see what happens. I think the verse seller just went underway and Killerbot is waiting for his natural hatchery to finish up and the spawning pool. So until those finish, though, that seller will have free reign of the Zerg base. And that is true, but uh, the spawning pool was built relatively early compared to the standard 12 hatch. So even though he's got a zealot right now on the base, the Zerglings are popping out pretty soon. So the Zealot won't be doing that much damage. Perhaps okay, the drone, drone, drone going down. That's already very good. And now the Zerglings hatch. And I doubt that the Zealot will get many more drone kills. Although the second one is on the way. Yeah, okay. So the Zealot did um, 50 mineral damage to the drone. We killed one Zergling, so that will be like 75 mineral damage plus some mine time lost. It's they are trading about even right now. Yep. Well, slightly in favor of Fisheye, as you might expect from a C plus player, but it's still pretty pretty much anyone's game right now. Anyone's game, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and he lost the second zealot as well. Oh, uh, Killerbot going for a very fast third hatch. A bit of a risky play, but if he can properly defend it. And uh, then we'll pay off. Okay, and Killerbot now going for the throat. Two zealots in the choke. They're killing so many zerglings. And the cannon is finishing up, so I don't think that Killerbot, no, Killerbot um, notices it. And pulls back the last four lings. Yeah, that's uh, quite a decent uh, decision making to pull back. 
of course, he should have realized maybe that there was a bit of a choke point right there and that those zealots would hold it up easily. But, well, I mean, if Killabot can defend this third century, he's still in this game easily. Okay, yeah. And those links keep running in and out, just trying to have a look every once in a while to see if the probe is moving out or pressure. if the defenses are upgraded. They're mainly putting pressure on the Protoss to defend his own base. After all, what you want, if you expand very, very fast like this, is you want the Protoss to be forced to keep inside of its own base. That way you can really reap the benefits of those fast expansions. Yeah. So now more Zerglings are joining the contain. And behind that, the third is finishing up, four kilobot. Another hatchery being placed in the natural and gas being taken so at this point it's basically only aggression and drones zerglings and overlords and infrastructure so no technology yet for the for the ai player uh, let's see so yeah lo lots of hatcheries uh, lots of zerglings but again zealots you want to have, to have a lot of zerglings yeah and now the zealots are moving out four of them and there are many, many Zerglings coming up, so I don't think that Killerbot will have any trouble holding this at all. No, Killerbot will, especially with the Sunken in his main, in his uh, natural, mm -hmm. he will hold his push up easily. And a lot of drones, 22 drones already. Protoss player, 31 probes, but the Protoss army is very, very small at this moment. Uh, yeah, that's true, but he can still defend his base. As you can see, he can pull probes to defend his own natural base. And okay, he's attacking the third right now, and the third has a sunken, so the damage will be limited in the third, hopefully. Okay, now the zealot spotted, and there is an attack going at the, the natural of the human player. The zerglings there won't come through, and the sunken is being engaged at the third. One zealot dies, the probe is coming out to help, more ze uh, zerglings pouring in, and I don't even think that these zealots will take down the sunken. So this is a bit of a victory for the zerg player, I should say. Well, he did sacrifice some zerglings to put on a little bit more pressure on the portal's base. So in terms of supply, uh, zergs are at 41 and uh, the protoss is at 49. As you might expect from a fast third expansion, zerg is a little bit behind for now, but he is saturating the main. Uh, and the natural and the third. So, and he also has, um, he also has a hydrous den. So yep. we're going to see a lot of hydras pretty soon. He's going, yeah, Zerg thing. Yeah, the Zerg is going to take advantage of its third expansion. It's yeah, the third base as in third base. Pretty down, pretty soon, yeah. Okay. So plus one weapons finishing up for Protoss. That will put an end to the the Zergling threat. But as you see, the human player is building a lot, a lot of zealots, and against that's pretty good against zeal, uh, zerglings. But against hydras, it's not the best choice, I, I would say. Um, that that really depends on the upgrades, though. After all, um, also depends on uh, if the zerg player can take advantage of choke points, because hydras are ranged units, mm -hmm. and if you can funnel those uh, zealots into a choke point like a ramp then your high list will definitely be much more cost effective. But on the open battlefield, uh, like the middle of the map, for example, uh, you really are better off with Zerg. Fourth base taken by the Zerg player, and on the off chance, six zealots find it and will take it down. Will it get cancelled? Oh, no, it doesn't get cancelled. So that's a lot of money wasted for Zerg. Yeah, that's a bit of a setback for the Zerg player, but he's still in his game. He still has uh, more base than the Protoss, which is a good thing. So he can still uh, get this a bit, bit, bit of these micro Zerg can still come back. Okay, so that's a lot of Zerglings. We've now got 24 Zerglings versus the Zealots, and the Zealots got the plus one weapons upgrade, so they have a big advantage at this moment. There are some Hydras being produced at the back of this, but until those, oh, and the Zerglings come in, but the Zealots cut them all down. That's pretty, well, you've got to do something to delete, delay those uh, Zealots. And now the Hydras pop. There are two at the natural, but there is also a force of Zealot at the third. They cut down, oh, they cut down the sunken, and are now after the probes. The probes are, uh, the probes, the drones are being evacuated, but it's not enough. And now the Zerg main army is flooding 
every which way. But a lot of Lings are chasing one Zealot. Meanwhile, a lot of Zealots are taking out the Hydra Den in the third. And the Hydra numbers aren't big enough yet to take down these Zealots. So there goes the Hydra Den. Another sunken being morphed, but it's not in the right position. Two Zealots blocking off the ramp. Being taken down now by the Hydras. More Hydras streaming in, but at the top end, more Zealots are coming into the natural. So now the third is being saved, but the natural will be under attack soon. Yeah, and this is what you might expect from a C plus level player. He's very proactive in finding out any kind of expansions, where they are. And he took down like the bottom left one. And he was very aggressive in putting on pressure on the natural, all the while attacking the same time at the thirds. So it's uh, overall quite good from a C plus player. Okay. Yeah, and behind this, he went for a Templar archives and a third base. So now he's got dominance of the Zerg natural. There is tech coming up, and he's got a big army advantage. Yeah, this is basically the Portis has one right now. So, yeah, this is uh, definitely here you can see the skill difference once again. This is a C plus player. Sorry, and the C plus player is not easily fooled by uh, things like uh, hidden expansions. Uh, nope. So, uh, Killerbot in the actual tournament from the Team League. Defeated a C or C minus level player by doing the same kind of strategy of taking a lot of expansions. And a C minus player is not very, even if he knows about it, it's not really all that capable of really taking advantage of uh, uh, doing multi prong attacks, things like that. But a C plus player, as you can see, can easily take down. Uh, Azurka, this strategy, even if it's played by a bot with a lot of micro. Okay, so now we've got the main with a huge number of drones, but there is also a high Templar coming up, and I think with one storm he can kill so many drones. The drones are fighting for their lives, but against plus one zealot, it's really not something you'd like to do as a drone. Now they are buying time for the sunkens, so right now the sunken is just about to pop, but the drone loss is a little bit too much to come back, really. No, these drone losses are atrocious. And the third is being carved up by a couple of Zealots and an Archon. The natural is down. The only thing there is a sunken colony still morphing. Oh no, it's a creep colony as of yet. Hasn't even, there is no money to make it into a sunken colony because all the drones are gone. And now it's just Zealots and an Archon versus a lot of defenseless buildings. That's too bad. Yeah, so this is pretty much GG. We're going to call it right now. Yeah, we'll just uh, put it on fastest times four or three, uh, two, something okay. like that. So uh, these were the show matches for the Zactronics Man vs. Machine Team League. Yeah, for the, uh, in combination with the SSAI. I took some bots from the SSAI and set them up against human players in that Team League. Okay. We might do some more, maybe I'll do some more, but we'll see about that. This is it for now. Uh, you can check out Zactronics games where you can have uh, fun games, which will teach you how to program as well on top of it. Very fun to check out. Uh, Zectronic Games, you can find the games on Steam. The newest game is, of course, Shenzhen IO. But for people who are just starting out, Infinity Factory is the, the game to start out with. It's the most easiest one. So definitely check those out as well. And of course, check out the Student Stock of AI Tournament, which is currently ongoing. And you have anything else at Art Navata? Uh, no, I'm uh, set and done. Thank you for yeah, these yeah. matches. We've got one AI victory and three for the humans. So uh, thank you for casting with me. And if there's nothing else, I think I say goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Okay, bye-bye.